Okay, and you can focus on solving one right angle triangle. So this is the easiest situation that you're going to have when you have when A is greater than B. However, the ambiguous case happens when um, we have to figure out what is going to be the scenario when uh, A is not greater than B. So A is not greater than B. That means A is less than B. So when A is less than B, we are going to, our next step is going to be to calculate the value of B sine A. So your side B multiplied by whatever your angle A is, the sine of that. You're going to calculate B sine A. And the ambiguous case tells us that uh, it's going to fulfill one of these three scenarios. If A is less than B sine A, no triangle can be formed and you can stop. If A is equal to B sine A, you're going to have one right angled triangle. And if A is greater than B sine A, you will have two triangles. Not right angle triangles, you're going to have one acute triangle where the angles are less than 90 degrees and you're going to have one obtuse triangle. Obviously the very third situation when you have two different triangles stuck together that's going to be the more difficult situation and the situation we're going to be testing you on the most Therefore, I'm going to focus my seminar on the third scenario, and I'll give you one example of the first scenario. So we have these three different situations. Let's go back to the chart for a second, and I'm going to use my highlighter. So when we have no solution, no triangle can be formed, because A is less than B sine A, that means A isn't long enough to connect the triangle. So it's going to look something like this. And you can kind of, after you, you figure out that A is less than B sine A, you can stop and make your conclusion. Okay? If A is equal to B sine A, that means that this length and this length are completely equal to each other. So we have just enough of an A side to drop it down to form a, a right angle triangle, a right angle triangle. And you can solve using your methods that you learned in your Unit 12 guide. Strategy of solving. That means you will be using your opposite, your adjacent, and your hypotenuse to solve, okay? That's why we're not going to spend any time in this seminar dealing with that situation. Now, when you have a is, A is greater than B sine A. So forget this, this is very complicated. If A is greater than B sine A, that is the more difficult situation and we have two triangles. I want you to look at your chart very carefully because the A side is actually going to, well, let me explain this. First we have this outer triangle, the big triangle. A, B, C. We have that one big simple triangle which you would be able to solve using the sine law or cosine law like you normally would. However, this side length A, if we, if we swung it over to the other side, I can see that it forms another triangle as well. So I have, oops, I have actually three triangles. I have this isosceles triangle where the two length, uh, side lengths are the same. I have this big outside triangle. Everyone see that? The outer uh, sides form a big triangle. And I also have, we'll use another color, an obtuse triangle where this angle ABC is greater than 90 degrees. However, for this unit, we're only asking you to solve for the obtuse triangle and the big acute triangle. We don't expect you to solve all three, okay? But this is what the ambiguous case is all about. And the definition, the main thing you have to remember, what tells you to um, 
perform the steps necessary for ambiguous case, it all starts with A is greater than B sine A, okay? Now we're going to do actual examples, like what you will be expected to do on your test and your unit guide. So all you start off with, they don't even give you this triangle. This is just here to save me some time. Um, it says solve triangle ABC with uh, side length A is equal to uh, 11, angle A is equal to 30 degrees, and B is equal to 20. You have to make sure that your information is correct, you're labeling the triangle correctly, and uh, don't swap sides. That's the number one thing. Okay. So right now I've told you how the triangle is going to look like, but when you're doing this question, you don't know yet. So your first step is to check, is A greater than B? Is A greater than B? Can someone tell me, is that the case? Is A greater than B, Jobin? No? Yes, because 11 is not greater than 20. Is 11 greater than 20? The answer is no. And whenever the answer is no, that means I have to move on to step two. So step two is to calculate B sine A. All of these steps need to be present when you're doing your unit work and when you're doing your um, test. So I know that side length B is 20 and sine A is just sine of 30 degrees. Remember to make sure your calculator is in degree mode and when you punch this into your calculator, you're going to get a value of 10. So we have to ask yourself, is A greater than B sine A? Is A greater than B sine A? Well, I know that A is 11 and B sine A is 10. So is 11 greater than 10? Yes. And this is what tells me that my diagram is going to have we're going to have two triangles in the diagram, two triangles. So step one and step two are always your preliminary steps. Now once you've copied this down, I want you to watch the board very carefully because if you know how to draw the triangle, then it's very easy to, well, the other steps will make sense. If you don't know how to draw the triangle, then you're going to, going to run into a lot of problems. Okay, so you always start with your um, outer triangle. So I know that the given side, well, first of all, let me highlight something. Kind of always think of the isosceles triangle as separate. And the unknown, so I know side length B, but I don't know angle B, right? So I'm going to label the isosceles triangle, it kind of looks equilateral there, but it's actually an isosceles triangle, with my angle B1, and this is going to be my angle B2. Those are the first things you should label, okay? The angle that you're given is always this outside angle that's part of my obtuse triangle. So angle A is always this lonely little angle on the outside and I know the value of angle A. That's going to be 30 degrees. Okay? I do not know the value of angle C and the reason I know this is angle C because this is triangle ABC. So even though they've only given us information about A and B, you can't forget that that angle up here is angle C. Okay, so label that as well. I want you guys drawing this triangle in your notes, okay? I want to see you drawing it um, just so you understand every step of the process. Okay, now we're still talking about the outside triangle. So I'm going to erase, oops, erase this highlighter for a second and we're talking about the outside triangle.
So I know that small side A is going to be opposite big angle A, small side A. So small side A is equal to 11.